Okay. That was pretty good. I took a nice long walk. And I hadn't walked for like a long time. So I wasn't known, didn't know what to expect. But the last time I tried to take a walk, I didn't make it to the green recycle bin with the dead possum beside it. Uh, and I haven't walked for so long that the possum has decomposed quite nicely in the meantime. But I didn't make it to that recycle bin the last time I walked, and this time I walked clear around the recycle bin, around the dentist office, through the back parking lot, and I just felt like I could do it. So I did it. Which is pretty cool. I also did this. I got it in my pocket. Didn't mean to do that for a long time. For like, I don't know, a month. But I put my plague cross on my door. So that's I'm gonna have to take the shirt off because I don't I couldn't find any of the those black ace bandage type things. So it's irritating me. The only thing's touching my stomach. Head is askew. Mm. <sighs> All right. Well, yesterday. Now, yesterday, I did, uh, was uh, well. I've been in depression for a while, but yesterday I wasn't particularly motivated to do much anything. But I did manage to uh, do a couple of chores. It's odd that I can't remember. I remember I did two things, but the only thing I remember is cutting up tons of these boxes and sandwich boarding them together. It's not working for some reason. There we go. And sandwich boarding them together and uh, duct taping them for the recycle can. Uh, what else did I do? I did something else. I can't remember right now. And my nose is running. It's it's still wintry, which I like it. You know, I like walking in the cold. That's good for your nerves, you know. A change of environment, seeing different things, but just uh, going from being cold and getting that fresh air to going it back into your stuffy warm prison, which. Uh, by the way, somehow Stampy managed to uh, th make it a three-piece band. So now there's stomping. There's a barking dog, and she put a heavy set of wind chimes and hung them up like right outside my window. Like you know, they're on the porch, but you know, not everybody likes wind chimes, and I'm one of them guys that don't like wind chimes. So she got a power trio going there of, you know, Eric Clapton, Ginger Baker, and Jack Bruce. Now, I'm not sure what other, see that would be a wind instrument, the chimes. The dog would be like a, uh, hmm, maybe a guitar, or, you know, it would be like um, the non-rhythm section. And then, of course, you know, her stamping is the bass um, is, is, that's the Jack uh, Bruce portion of it. So we need some drums. I'm not sure what she can do about drums. And then, you know, well, the dog would be the vocalist. I don't know what I'm thinking. Obviously, I never prepared these things, or I would have had this all thought out ahead of time. The dog is the vocalist. The wind chimes is some kind of wind instrument, like we'll say a saxophone. And then we have a bass player. It's almost like a bass slash drums, but it's definitely part of the rhythm section is the stomping. She needs to do one more thing, though. She needs, there's, it's just not quite right. It is interesting hearing all that sound together. You know, in, interesting sort of way, sort of like, you know, getting stung by wasps is interesting. But, uh... Yeah, I didn't look at any houses yet, so I'm not going to lie about that. I'm going to do that today. Um, I'm going to start out with 
just looking at a couple of things, you know. Like I said, man, it is the 10th. So that means I got 50 days until July 1st. So, but the days have a way of going by. And, you know, you put things off and they don't ever get done. So, I'll start out on that. Uh, I think like doing these videos and stuff is like off-putting to uh, I don't have friends you know I got like well I got a couple of friends I consider my brother my friend but he's my brother and I got uh, one friend I was talking about who had uh, detached retina scare the other guy that's my real estate agent is perhaps put off uh, a bit because I have I have a way of coming on too strong I don't expect anything from anybody you know I'm pretty I'm very low maintenance but um, I have a peculiar personality I'm the kind of guy who puts plague crosses on their door as a joke during a world pandemic and if I you know if I hadn't just walked huh, maybe I'll do that tomorrow I was gonna sit out in the Sun today and do the video out in the Sun but the weather's supposed to be warming up here. I think the high today is supposed to top 50. But uh, there's no guarantees on the sun in Ohio. It's not the sunniest. It's not the sun capital of the world. So I thought I'd get it done while I had some adrenaline flowing from walking. Which I did a surprisingly good job at. Um, fairly straight and true. Which, uh, I guess after walking around the house and lifting and carrying and rearranging stuff, I guess walking, my knee was like, oh, this is much better, this straight line stuff. I don't know. But anyways, uh, yeah. So I don't know, you know. He's also a busy dude because he's, uh, he might have the COVID blues like a lot of people because a lot of people like, they're, they don't, they're not like me. They, I have no routine. Okay, you know, so I'm, I'm used to it, but people get their lives disrupted and they get shook out of their routines. And it's very disorienting to, to them, you know. There's a there's actually people that hate not having a job and not working. My brother is one of them, you know, and I'm like, um, you're really not looking at this from the right angle. You get the you get a guaranteed three hots in a cot you get to sleep in whenever you want you don't have anybody telling you what to do you don't have to show up at a, a specific place if you feel like shit you can just you know say I'm gonna lay in bed today and there's lots of perks to be in the the drawback is the lack of social interaction um, the lack of uh, romantic opportunities and um, the lack of uh, that little self-esteem boost but see I don't need a self-esteem boost I got I, I manufacture that shit on my own because nobody knows what it's like to be me and uh, yeah and I do pretty good just uh, waking up above ground every day let alone taking the time to learn things and to uh, be mildly entertaining but as far as like when I meet people, it's like I have a habit of like uh, not holding back, you know, not like, you know, it's sort of like with what if when you go, when when you're sitting there and you go up to a dog and you walk right up to him and you reach out to him and you scratch him on the head. That's stupid. You don't ever do that. But that's kind of like what my personality is. Is um. You know, I've actually been scolded by the crazy guy who drunk the bong water for, you know, for impoliteness. Because I asked, when the woman got the puppy, that which is now the dog, which is now uh, the vocalist of the, of the three-piece band, uh, I asked her, did you get the dog for exercise or for company? You know, and he looked at me and like, what's wrong with you, man? That's not polite. You know, this is a guy that drinks bong water and uh, flips off cops and, um, 
is generally out of his damn mind. <laughs> Looking at me like, what's wrong with you, man? But that that's just that's just the way I am. I mean I don't I don't know. Um I mean it's not like I don't have some tact. Uh but yeah. It's like we'll see how it goes with this dude. But yeah, it'd be nice to have a friend. Um, you know. It's people offer say, you know, you wanna be my friend over the internet. I don't know how to do that. So, uh, yeah, I would have to know more about you and your situation. And uh, even, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is really the pot calling the kettle black, but there are a lot of crazies out there, you know. So you kind of have to be careful. There's a lot of people that, you know, uh, are just emotionally needy or or whatever um, it's just the fact of being on the internet you know it's like I have people warn me about like uh, interacting with people on the internet and I'm like well yeah I went, went so far as to say you know where I live man just don't kidnap me and throw me in a well or you know put me in a cage and try to make me entertain you because I'm not always entertaining as you well know, and uh, yeah, so I don't really, I don't care. I, I guess I, I remember I spelt my name on here because I kept my name secret for a long time. I spelt my name on here, and some guy was like, "Aha!" and he wrote my name down. And I was like, "Fuck you, man! If you want to come see me, come see me. Come look me up. I don't care care about that." Um. My security detail will take care of you. I don't have a security detail, but I, but uh, yeah, I got. I will cast a cast a spell upon you, and you will henceforth have horrible luck. Yeah, I will transfer my luck magically upon you. Upon you, uh, and then we'll see how you do in my situation. But yeah, it's good to get outside and walk about, get some cold air. And, uh, yeah, I'm so used to being, in, uh, like, it's not like, it sounds stupid when you say, like, oh, I'm an oddball car character or whatever, but I've always been, like, off. Because I grew up in, like, a weird situation, so I've always been off. And people never really knew what to make of me. So I'm kind of used to that. And, uh, so I'm like, you know, why should I pretend to be like other people? I am as unlike other people as you can get. I'm not here shirtless because I want to be, you know, I'm, uh, I've been through things that most people can't imagine and been in situations that most people can't imagine. So, you know, so some of which I can tell on here, some of which I can't, some of which I won't. So, you know, um, the overall po point being is like, I don't, you know, I want to be friends with this dude. We got shitload in common, but I'm kind of feeling like a little bit of resistance. And it's like, I don't expect us to, uh, I got a, I got a visual image in my head as, as like me, this is, Silly, but me on the bed with my feet kicked back, you know, on my belly saying, how have you been today? <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> like a girl. <laughs> yeah, nothing like that. I don't expect nothing like that. It's like, I would, it would be cool if I could just like be, be guitar buddies with the dude, you know, like, you know, he's not going to hurt my feelings by being a thousand times better on guitar than I am because nearly everybody is so I don't mind that I bit my lip in my sleep it actually woke me up I don't know what I was dreaming about but uh yeah I got I've been thinking about the dentist and at some point I'm just gonna have to roll the dice you know uh roll the COVID dice and 
I'm gonna I'm gonna be going to like uh, a heart doctor on June 22nd because I need to have those blood thinner pills because if I don't have the blood thinner pills I uh, they will keep me in the hospital and then that will like up my chances of catching COVID or, or uh, MRSA or God knows what else or just being tortured with weird uh, Nazi like medical tests um, for days instead of just getting shocked in the emergency room and sent the fuck back out the hospital. So I am going to have to be getting out of here and I don't think they're going to be able to fix this COVID situation by June 22nd. Do you? I don't think so. You know, I mean, what they need to do is they need to come up with a vaccine for it or I, I haven't like read anything about treatments. Um, they don't even have like a, a test. They only have like, there's like 11 million people in my state. And they only got like 14,000 testing kits or something like that. So, you know, I don't know. I just don't see anything, any resolution of this situation anytime soon. So I might as well, instead of letting this get worse and letting this sharp teeth bite me in my sleep, Go there and say, please file this down and spackle this. And you can file this one while you're at it. And if you want to, you know, stick your filthy hands in my mouth and make molds so I'm more attractive on camera and uh, look like I have teeth. Um, yeah. Go ahead. And it's, it's, not, it's not good for me when I let stuff like that slide because it makes it harder. Like the longer you wait to do anything, it makes it harder to do. You know, and, uh, yeah, it's what I'm, and I can't say that, but, um, some of the more, dis, we'll put it in very vague terms, some of the more dysfunctional people I know, you know, I just tell them outright, man, it's like, um, you can run, but you can't hide. You can run for so long, but your life is going to catch up to you. And, uh, yeah, you can, you can not deal with stuff, but sooner or later it's going to deal with you. And be it emotional stuff or whatever kind of stuff. So, you know, I haven't, I haven't read, like, I wrote, like, a Dear John email to uh, my foster brother and I didn't even like open his email because I didn't want to hear nothing about it you know I didn't want to hear nothing about nothing from him I, at the time I didn't want to hear nothing about it and uh, so that's kind of an uncool thing I don't know what he would say in response to to it because I got the truth on my side and I don't want to hear none of his bullshit or none of his I'm sorry's or none of his excuses man I want to see some money because that's what matters to him and if he you know if he ever shows up on, at my door and you know feels like the need to reconcile I'll be like you ruin my property and you don't give me one dime to it I don't want to hear no words words are easy I want some and if you don't have any to give me right now go out I might have a hatchet in my hand at the time. I might not. I, mean, I don't know. You know. Uh, I am no longer the terrifying figure of his youth. That uh, I once beat him up all the way home, which is a pretty good trick. <laughs> but yeah, he kicked me in the head with uh, hunting boots on. Which I can take a shot to the head. That's not a big deal. But he kicked me in the head with he really didn't have any choice since beating the shit out of him, so I don't really blame him for kicking me in the head with uh, boots to get him off, to get me off of him. But you know, after the the birdie stopped floating and the stars stopped uh, shining and the bell stopped ringing, um, he didn't get very far. And then I caught him, and then I beat him all the way home. I had bad role model, man. What do you want? We were just kids, so you know, I uh, I got my come it, come up. It's from a, at, at the hands of a guy with a, the name of a U.S. president named John Adams. 
and the guy almost killed me, so I got paid back in spades by the universe for being such a dick when I was a kid. Because uh, I got <laughs> got the same thing <laughs> again, man, boots in the head. Yeah, maybe I got a little CTE, like the football players get, that uh, makes my temper what it is. I know I was uh, making my niece uncomfortable because she brought up some stuff that reminded me of some stuff. Specifically, um, that one time the dude had a crack dealer parked outside of my house and I lost my temper. And uh, I had him backing out like this, like, like, don't, you know, don't get upset. And he wouldn't take his eyes off of me and I'm, I'm like, what a pussy you are, man. I can't even walk. If I could walk, I would go out there and confront the guy myself. I, I was off the deep end. You know, and C CTE people are uh, prone to t fits of violent tempers. Um, Ex-football players, boxers. Sugar Ray Robinson beat his wife, you know. And I don't think he really would have done that if he would, hadn't been hit in the head a million times. Uh, there's other instances, um, too many to count. Then he, there's a really good documentary if you're interested in that. Doc, if you like documentaries about CTE, it's right here on you, YouTube. Maybe I'll look it up and post it in the link about how the NFL, you know, that's a billion dollar industry, how they tried to cover up the first findings about um, CTE. And how getting repeated, you, even one concussion is not good for you, you know. But they, it, it's about the scientists that discovered it, and uh, you know how the NFL was denying it in every way possible until they couldn't deny it anymore. You know that getting hit in the head is not good for you, and it all come off of a uh, Hall of Fame center, Mike Webster, is. Uh, the unfortunate um, ground zero test subject. If you remember the 70s Steelers dynasty with uh, Terry Bradshaw, which everybody knows Terry Bradshaw, and Franco Harrison, Lynn Swan. I could name the whole team, but I'm not going to. Um, I'll put that down there. I mean, I, I thought it was a good documentary, if you, but if you like documentaries. Um, Today, we'll see how the day goes, and we'll see how my legs act, as since I took a nice long walk. And um, I'm going to finish uh, watching. Um, I, I listened to this book, uh, Matilda. Okay, I think I might have been talking about this the other day. I don't remember, because uh, one of the videos didn't quite make it, because I didn't tell the story right which was kind of important. I left you hanging as to whether the guy actually had the attached red. <laughs> so I had to wipe that out. But I was listening to this kid's book named Matilda uh, by the rolled doll guy that did Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, which is the Willy Wonka movie. And um, he did another book called The Witches, but he's like um, one of the first so-called children books guys to uh, put like really evil nasty adults and have kids do really evil nasty things to adults and stuff it's like <laughs> he's like the first guy to, to uh, really take it to that level it's like if you read some of his stuff you're like what the hell happened to this guy in his childhood you know did he have like a George Orwell type of uh, experience in school which uh, George Orwell uh, I guess English schools are no, were notorious in that day and age for being bastions of cruelty to children. I have to read up on the rolled doll guy, but anyways, yeah, that's uh, that's messed up kind of stuff. So I listened to the book and then I was watching the movie, which stars Sarah Paulson from American Horror Story. And uh, anyways. So, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. A book is a book to me, man. The Lorax is still a good book to me. I even referenced that the other day. 
about the Lorax when they chopped down my favorite apple tree. So, you know, I would be the Lorax, except for the Lorax was peaceful. I would be the Lorax, and the axe would be in my name for a reason. Because I was pissed when they chopped down my favorite apple tree. Because you could not find them apples in, in stores. They're green. They're not particularly crisp. And they're green when they're ripe. And um, I, you just don't find them anywhere. And that was the only place you could find them. Um, I think my mom ran across them and they were called hunger kill apples which was just like a brand name for them and I would like have I, I would eat half the bag frankly and just eat as many of them as I could to, without anybody noticing that I was eating them because I was in a household with uh, five other kids and two adults and I was eating all the apples but they chopped down my apple tree with these freaky apples and they had white seeds also I remember that about them they had white seeds uh, the white uh, I guess would be the flesh of the apples and when they were ripe they were green I, I think they were green when they weren't ripe too <laughs> but they, they stayed green and they weren't like a granny smith they weren't crisp on the outside but uh, one of the weirdest things is my brother was out rabbit hunting and there's these rare apples that uh, they get ripe really really late in the year like um, frost on the ground late in the year and they're gigantic man they're he brings home an apple and it's like this big it's like you have to eat an apple in three sittings it's a big damn apple and I'm like what in the hell is that I have to try to look them up on the internet but uh, Oh, also, I'll post a video of a Great Pyrenees for my uh, Great Pyrenees polar bear story where my uh, dog, I found a, a video of a lady that had a Great Pyrenees sitting on a couch beside her. Um, yeah, so I'll post a couple of things beneath here for you to look at, and I think I don't want to talk anymore just because I don't want to. Um, but yeah that was nice that was nice to get outside in the cold it's, it's about 41 degrees out uh, the, and it's, we're going to start getting some warmer weather around here in 3 or 4 days more appropriate weather to May set highs in the 70's lows in the 50's type of deal but it looks like a lot of rain oh, the state of Ohio is not famous for its beautiful weather we're famous for stability we don't deal with hurricanes, we don't deal with uh, wildfires, we don't deal with earthquakes or tsunamis. The only thing we got to worry about is tornadoes and boredom. So Ohio is, yeah, that's that should be the motto of Ohio. Come to Ohio. All you got to worry about is an occasional tornado. Come to Ohio for the stability. Because, uh, like I said, I've talked to uh, uh, my cousin in Florida in the middle of, in the middle of a hurricane, and I'm like, I can barely hear you, man. What the hell's going on down there? And he goes, Ah, oh, hurricane. Where are you? I'm outside on the porch in the, in uh, in an enclosure. What's that sound? Frogs. What do you mean frogs? Well, the wind is blowing so hard that it's blowing frogs. Uh, sideways into the screen in the enclosed area that I'm in from the pond next door. <laughs> like, really? Them thuds are, I'm hearing as, as fogs, as frogs? I was like, man, what's next? Locusts? Uh, you know, you don't have a firstborn at least. And then he was like, uh, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what are you doing outside? And he's like, smoking I'm like you're smoking outside in a hurricane he goes yeah they won't let me smoke inside and I start laughing I'm like man you got a strict household there man that's they take their rules seriously I mean you think they'd make an exception for a hurricane but it sounded like a freight train was going on in the background and he was sitting outside in the middle of a hurricane smoking <laughs> I think I yeah he didn't call me either. I rang him up. So, yeah, I rang him up when I heard that there was a possibility of uh, hurricanes in Florida. 
and sure enough you was smack dab in the middle of one but Ohio all you got to worry about is the occasional tornado and I, I just missed being in the middle of a, tor a tornado you know if I would have just left a half an hour earlier I would have been smack dab in the middle of a tornado but I never got to see a tornado I hope to be able to see one one day I got hit by a mini tornado which was like a water spout and it uh, changed the it, it created like instant 45 mile an hour winds but that doesn't count a tornado has to be a real honest to god uh, cow flying through the air rip a car up and throw it sideways tornado and I want to experience one before I die so I was really disappointed that I didn't get caught in the middle of that tornado anyways uh, I will see you tomorrow hope you have a good day I hope things are going well for you and uh, I hope I have further progress in my mood and getting things done around here because there is no shortage of things to do around here I hope I have a good report for you tomorrow so anyways put my glasses back on adios